Hi guys, today we are going to deal about the uh, abdominal puparium. So in the last class we discussed about the various uh, conditions that can appear during the puparium like breast disorders, puparal sepsis, puparal pyrexia. So this class will be the continuation of the, uh, the previous class. So we are going to deal about various other abnormalities that can occur during the puparium. So the topics which we are going to deal today is first one is pupil venous thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, obstetric palsy, psychiatric disorder during puparium, and psychological response to perinatal death. So these these conditions will be uh, dealt today. So first we are going to deal about the pupil thrombosis. So what is pupil thrombosis? You know what is thrombus? Thrombosis is the formation of clot. And pupil is the time period that is during the pupil after the delivery to six weeks. It is known the period is known as puparium. So the clot which forms during the pupil period is known as pupil thrombosis. And the leg vein and pelvic vein is one of the complications in Western countries. So the most affected vein will be leg vein and pelvic vein. Okay, and it is uh, the more is most commonly seen in western countries however the prevalence is low in asians and africans so now we are going to deal about the pathology or the physiology of pathogenesis so what happens why this disorders happens during the puparium so we are going to see in detail regarding that because during the pregnancy there will be rise in the coagulation factors like coagulation factor 1 2 7 8 9 10 and 12 so these concentration will be increased during pregnancy and another point is the plasma fibrinolytic inhibitors will be produced by the placenta then there will be some changes happening in the constituents of blood that is there will be increased number of platelet formation will be there and that platelets are very end so they will be very adhesive adhesive means it will, it will um, adhere to the blood vessels okay so that is the another point Next point is venous stasis is increased due to the compression of gravity uterus to the inferior vena cava and iliac veins. So we know that during pregnancy, uh, fetus is there in the uterus. So day by day, the, uh, the, uh, the baby will be growing. So the, this gravid uterus will exert pressure over the inferior vena cava and iliac vein. So there will be stagnation of blood in the veins. This can lead to damage to the endothelial cells okay the another point is some genetic conditions like thrombophilias these are genetic disorders so if the mother is having this condition so she is prone to get thrombosis and another one is acquired thrombophilias that is due to uh, uh, presence of lupus anticoagulant and anti phospholipids antibodies so these are the various causes of etiopathogenesis one thing is during pregnancy itself various changes happens. For example, the clotting factors, the concentration of the clotting factors will be increased like 1, 2, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12. This, the rise of this concentration of this coagulation factors, so this, this will lead to impuperum. It can lead to the formation of clot. And moreover, the placenta, during pregnancy, the placenta will produce plasma fibrinolytic inhibitor. Fibrin, um, uh, this plasma fibrinolytic inhibitors will be produced by the placenta and there will be various other alterations of the blood constraints like the level of platelet will be increased. That too the number of platelets will increase and the platelets which are formed will be in so it, it will be having adhesive nature so it will be adhered to the blood vessels. The another point is the venous stasis because of the gra this, this gravid uterus okay this gravid uterus will exert pressure over the yeah, inferior vena cava and iliac veins so this uh, compression will lead to the stagnation of blood on the vein and this will because of the stagnation of blood in the vein that will lead to the damage of the endothelial cells and some genetic conditions like thrombophilia and even upward thrombophilia so all this can lead to puparal thrombosis to a mother so next are the risk factors so who are at the risk the first one is the advanced age and parity operative delivery obesity anemia and heart disease trauma to the venous vessel wall and infections okay, and deep vein trauma 
so these are the risk factors and in this case the clinical features the mother will experience uh, mother will be asymptomatic initial stage she will be asymptomatic means she won't show any symptoms she will be just complaining about the pain over the calf muscles and leg edema will be there and temperature will be right skin temperature of the calf region the skin temperature will be rise and there will be positive hormone sign okay and during investigation by the by investigation that is doppler ultrasound and venography we can identify this deep vein thrombosis then pelvic thrombophlebitis in this case this pelvic thrombophlebitis means the pelvic vein will be affected dvt that is deep vein thrombosis in that the, the deep veins are involved here pelvic thrombophlebitis here the clinical features will uh, develop after two uh, sec second week of puberty then the mother will experience fever with chills and rigor there will be feature of toxemia that is headache malaise and rising pulse and whichever the leg is affected whichever the leg, uh, leg uh, is affected the mother will feel pain and swelling and it will be called and by blood investigation we can find out that there is polymorpho nuclear leukocytosis so this is for the pelvic thrombophlebitis now what can be the preventive measures what can be the preventive measures to avoid the prevalence of venous thrombosis okay the first one is we have to find out who are the low and high risk women to develop this thrombosis so how to manage first thing is bed rest should be given and food should be put and should be raised analgesics can be given to relieve the pain then there is chance of infection so antibiotics anticoagulants so that the thrombus formation will be reduced then we have to uh, encourage the mother to gently move the leg legs once the pain is relieved and uh, vena vena cava fillers can be uh, used that is the vena cava will be ligated by the teflon clips so that can be done or fibrinolytic agents can be given and venous thrombectomy okay so all this can be done for the prophylaxis purpose for the from uh, to uh, pupural venous thrombosis so that is about pupural thrombosis so we just revise what we dealt now so uh, the pupural thrombosis it commonly affects in leg vein and pelvic vein and it the, it is common in western countries and less prevalent in asians and africans and by the reason is the concentration of the coagulation factors will be increased during pregnancy and the uh, the number of placenta will increase and uh, the, the sorry, number of platelet will be increased and it will be more adhesive and due to the, some genetic conditions from ophelias and even the venous uh, the blood stagnation in the veins due to the compression of uh, gravity compression of inferior vena cava and iliac veins uh, due to the compression of gravity so this can all lead can be the uh, ha pathogenesis so then we dealt about the risk factors so who are at the risk who is advanced age and parity obese patient operative delivery and the anemic and heart disease women and any injury to the venous vessel wall and infections in deep vein thrombosis some other will be asymptomatic there will be pain over the calf muscles leg edema rise in the temperature of the skin at the affected region and hormone sign will be positive investigation ultrasound can be given, uh, done uh, then venography in pelvic thrombophlebitis it usually develops at the second weeks of the puperium uh, the mother may have fever with chills and rigor talks the features of toxemia because the uh, blood is been infected so headache malaise and rising pulse the leg affected leg will be painful swollen and it will be called and uh, the blood investigation will show the leukocytes okay then the prevention aspect we have bed rest foot and should be raised analgesics antibiotics fibrinolytic agents anticoagulants and gentle movements of the leg once the pain is relieved and vena cava fillers can be done and venous thrombectomy so what the thrombus will be removed next we are going to deal about the pulmonary embolism it is the most leading cause of the maternal death it is with uh, it is actually a fatal condition so here you can by the name itself we can identify that it is embolism means the uh, thrombus the formed thrombus moving clot is known as embole 
so that emboli when it reaches a pulmonary circulation that will lead to pulmonary embolism okay so because of decline of maternal mortality due to hemorrhage hypertension and sepsis so pulmonary embolism can occur and death occurs within short time from shock and vagal inhibition pulmonary embolism due to shock and vagal inhibition that is it will be uh, uh, it will inhibit the vagus nerve so that due to this two condition the death of newborn can happen the clinical feature is sudden collapse acute chest pain air hunger there are classical symptoms for the massive pulmonary embolism tachypnea dyspnea pleuritic chest pain cough tachycardia hemoptysis rise in temperature above 37 degrees celsius so as the uh, as the name indicates that is pulmonary embolism so lungs will be affected okay pulmonary circulation will be altered so all the respiratory symptoms will be exhibited by the patient and uh, it is very severe condition the patient can go to sudden collapse the diagnosis is chest x ray okay and then uh, we have to rule out pneumonia atelectasis that is collapse of the lung and ecg has to be taken doppler ultrasound should be taken the even the lung scan can be done mri can be done pulmonary angiography the treatment is as we said that the patient can collapse so the resuscitation is the one important thing then iv fluid support should be given thrombolytic therapy should be given digitalis and recurrent attack can happen so to if there is recurrent attack so embolectomy the embolus should be removed embolectomy has to be done so next is obstetric palsies the commonest form of palsy that of encounters in in puerperium is full drop i think you have heard about full drop so it is usually unilateral maybe one limb lower limb may be uh, affected or in some uh, and appears uh, and it usually appears after, shortly after the day, full drop okay it, it is usually unilateral means one leg will be affected and the causes are because of the stretching of the lumbar sacral trunk by the collapse intervertebral disc between lumbar 5 and sacrum one so what happened during the delivery there with the, the stretch due to the delivery there will be stretching of the lumbar sacral trunk and even a prolapsed intervertebral disc that is l5 between l5 and s1 the intervertebral disc will be collapsed that can lead to palsy and even during labor we know that the sacrum will be uh, def deflexed so your backward rotation of the sacrum can lead to palsies then even the direct pressure by the fetal head or by the forceful blade on the lumbar sacral cord that can also lead to obstetric palsies so clinical features is asymptomatic then flaccid uh, fl flaccidity and wasting of muscles and loss of sensation these are the clinical features management is bed rest for 6 weeks a splint is to be applied to prevent the damage of over stretch muscle massage and electric stimulation of the muscle so bed rest for the 6 weeks and splint should be avoided to prevent the stretch the damage to the over stretch muscles once the muscle is stretched we should not da um, uh, further damage should not happen so to avoid that a splint has to be applied a massage can be given like the stimulation of the muscles can be given this is the management of obstetric palsies So next we are going to deal about the psychiatric disorders during puerperium. It is quite common that the women who has under uh, who went through the childbirth, she is prone to have psychiatric disorder. Okay, so we will we are going to deal about that. So it is quite common. The first three month after delivery, the incident rate is very high, and overall incidence is fifteen to twenty percent each. and what can be the risk factors if the mother is having past history of mental illness or she had past history of puerperal psychiatric illnesses and if she has a family history of psychiatric illness and marital and if she has a family history of marital conflict then if the present pregnancy is cesarean section or it was a difficult labor or the baby had neonatal complication or it can be idiopathic so these are the risk factors past history of mental illness or in the previous pregnancies during the puerperal period she, she had any mental illnesses so for the subsequent pregnancies she can have the same episode 
and if the mother in the family history if there is some any psychiatric illnesses or she had marital complex or the pregnancy the cesarean section has happened or difficult labor or the baby had some complications this can all they in this all this sort of mother can exhibit psychiatric disorders during the period so first one is puerperal blues it is quite common so the definition is it is, it is transient state of mental illness observed 4 to 5 days after delivery and it lasts for few days so what is the definition it is a transient transient means it will uh, exit only for a short time this is for just a short period so it is a state of mental illness that is just for a short period and when it appears it is observed 4 to 5 days after delivery and it may last for few days so that is puerperal blues so it is just for a short time and usually it observes during the 4 to 5 days of puerperium and it lasts for few days that is puerperal blues and 50 percent age of 50 percent Fifty percent of postpartum women suffer from this problem, and the clinical manifestation is depression, anxiety, fearful, tearfulness, insomnia, helplessness, negative feelings towards infant, and no specific. Uh, uh, till now, no specific metabolic or endocrine abnormalities has been detected, but uh, the lower tryptophan level is observed in puerperal blues. Tryptophan level is uh, decreased. And uh, maybe neurotransmitter function due to the alteration of the neurotransmitter function also it can also it can also lead to different blues. Then treatment reassurance and psychological support has to be given to the family as well as for the patient. So what is puerperal blues? Here it is a transient state of mental illness usually observed by the four to five days after the delivery and it just lasts for few days. But if it is not treated promptly or pro proper care was not given, then it can lead to another psychiatric illness. So, at the initial period itself, the mother and the family members has to be given proper care. The mother, especially, she needs psychological support, emotional support. So, this has to be given to the mother. Next is postpartum dep depression. So, this uh, postpartum depression is seen in 10 to 20 percentage of mothers. It is gradual onset. Gradual means slowly. Slowly it will be onset and occurs in the first four to six months after delivery or abortion. So postpartum depression, it is seen in 10 to 20 percentage of mother. Gradual onset and it is it occurs in first four to six months after delivery or abortion. And the cause can be due to the changes in the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis okay this uh, hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis there is some changes then it can lead to the postpartum depression and the manifestations are loss of appetite insomnia social withdrawal irritability even the mother can have suicidal tendencies and there is risk of reoccurrence that is 50 to 100 percentage of cases in the subsequent pregnancy the mother can have the same postpartum depression Treatment is that is antidepressive agents should be given. That is, fluoxetine uh, and paroxetine can be given, and general support has to be given. And here, the over uh, the prognosis is good. So, it is uh, the postpartum depression. It is gradual onset. It happens in first four months. Okay. The next is schizophrenia. It is uh, in, if you see if we take 500 to 1000 mothers, about one we can see one case of schizophrenia among 500 to 1000 mothers, and it is seen in women with past history of psychosis or with positive family history, and it is suddenly onset within four days after delivery. Manifestations can be fear, restlessness, confusion, followed by hallucination, delusion, and disorder. All earlier. Studied and studied regarding his own condition. So you are well aware of this term, hallucination, illusion, delusion, disorientation. 
to need no, no need to extreme it then suicidal tendency infanticidal in that the mother will uh, mother will um, cause some harm to the baby also okay so here the risk of subsequent uh, reoccurrence is 20 percent the treatment is definitely the patient has to be considered with a psychiatrist at urgently and admission is needed chlorpromazine 150 mg stat and then 50 to 150 mg thrice daily if the mother is not responding with the uh, medical therapy then ecg has to be given the lithium is indicated if the mother is having manual depressive psychosis and in this case the breastfeeding will be contraindicated Next, psychological response to perinatal death if the feet uh, uh, the baby has dead okay in that cases actually the perinatal events are joyful but when the death happens special attention attention has to be given to the grieving patient and her family because the death has happened they were the entire pregnancy time she uh, uh, she was expect uh, she was expecting a baby but suddenly all her dreams it could not come uh, come true so this has have happened and the baby has died so special attention has to be given to the patient as well as to the family members so perinatal grieving may also be due to some even if in case due to some complication like pph hysterectomy has been done if the baby is malformed if the baby is critically ill this can also lead to some um, uh, to perinatal grieving. Okay. Obstetrician, nurse, and attending staff should as understand the patient reaction. Management is facilitated in the grieving process. Support and sympathy should be given. And we have to support the couple in holding or taking the photograph of the infant. And if it is uh, auto request for the autopsy, follow up visits, and plan for subsequent pregnancy should be given. So that is about. Uh, the abnormalities of vivarium during psychiatric illnesses we dealt about the pupillary blues, postpartum depression and schizophrenia, and then perinatal bleeding. So I hope you understand about this condition.